scripture is a Bible of scripture in a row of many, many more scriptures. So they have to stick together. But in our mentality, we might take some scriptures and say, hey, this is going to happen now. And we're pretty sure about it. Remember when we never ran up, came and started ministering the word of God, and he spoke as the Lord led him. People got very excited. Said, hey, we are at the end of time. Now the Lord is coming. The Lord of the Lord your brother, who went to the of the way as a missionary to South America. And he went to a school in a city in the U.S. to learn some more Spanish before he went into Latin America. And there, while he was there in the school studying Spanish, he then ran to town. And he started to leave. And him and his wife, and the little brother and his wife, they went to the meeting. And when he heard what he heard, and saw what he saw, he said, I don't think I have a calling to South America. Because he has not really received what God has revealed in our day. So he said in his heart, I better travel and leave and go to Jerusalem and learn more about the revelation of this hour before I start an missionary journey. So he moved up to Jefferson Hill, and that was in 1962. And while he was there, and when the Brandon came, he was just Brandon Tabernacle and Christian membership, and he went wherever Brother Brandon was for a certain time, he went to all the services he could possibly be in. And he was he also told about an experience. He was sitting in Chicago and in one of the services we had a precious friend of him in Norway that had a mental blockage, a problem, and he was in a mental hospital. And he was praying for this brother in Norway. And during one of the services in Chicago, Brother Brandon turned around and said, Mr. Brother, I'll share it to my brother. I don't know if he was left or right. Don't hear. In the congregation, I see blue waters. Brother, you're not praying for yourself. You're praying for someone over the blue waters. I believe it's in Scandinavia. And he said, you're praying for someone with a mental problem. He is healed now. That was thousands of miles away. And the brother, he knew it was him. You have a prayer of that. So his prayer was answered. And Mark, he said, that man's going to bring the bride in. <laughs> He's going to bring the bride in the rapture. Hey, we can give up the thought of how things are going to happen. If I ask you now, one after the other, how do you think this is going to end? Or how do you think it's going to proceed now? Will you tell me the event? And I think I would have maybe 50 different views. And because we don't know. Do we? Oh, yeah, they know it's the coming of the Lord, but they knew that in 1797. They knew that in the days of Paul. But the event of how this was going to transpire, not on that minute. And with the disciples, as we mentioned, Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, that the, the disciples said, Well, I know that we the kingdom. And the Lord said, It is not for you to know. But you shall be filled with the whole world, so that it may hereafter. So be told the only thing you need to worry about, or not really worry, but be concerned about is the filled with the Spirit. And we agree to that tonight, right? 
and you still the same message. The Holy Ghost doesn't come down anymore. It is down. It came down on the day of Pentecost. And from then on till now, and as long as we call it the great faith or the dispensation of faith, the Holy Ghost is available for every person who receives it. There is one requirement, repentance, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother, that was the message of the Abraham in a nutshell. His main topic was to make sure that the people would be the Holy Ghost. Oh, but he preached a lot more than that. Yes, he did. But still, the message was really to make sure the people have the Holy Spirit. Because if they have the Holy Spirit, then they would be saved. And they would be ready when the rapture comes. And remember, it is not how much you know about the message that's going to bring you in. Right. I hope you get not understand what I say to that. I don't say close book, forget about it, and just live on. No. It's free yourself. At the very moment you turn to the Lord, you start walking with it closed, always looking in one direction, towards the center of the will of God. And you're safe. And then, it doesn't matter how much you know. But of course, if you have, if you have believed for a month, you will have about a month of learning. <laughs> yeah. And if you have lived for 30 years in the faith, you have 30 years of learning. If you haven't fallen asleep, and you have used 29 of them just leaving the rock. But that, that's your shame. That's your secret. And that's going to be exposed, not by me or anyone else, but the Lord Himself. Don't get lazy in the last moment of your life. Yeah. Pick up the torch. Your stick, whatever. And if something happened in your life and it looks like you blew it, you messed it up, just get it right. Turn around. It's not too late to turn things around and start walking again. Remember, if you fall, you raise it up and you walk. Hopefully, you didn't break the leg. Just get off and start on for the Lord. It's very, very important. So, when we then are looking at these things, I know, brothers and sisters, when you live in the end time, then you want to know what is going on in the end time. Sorry, I'm moving around there. <laughs> and, and we get very confused because we want to know the next move of the Lord. Everybody wants to know that. But the answer is not coming until we move. And it is the people who are ready at the time of this moment that is going to receive it. Remember, there are a lot of scriptures in the Bible that is still going to be fulfilled. And we want to be in the positive part of its fulfillment. All right, let's just go back to where we left off this morning and look a little further, because it will lead us to our own day, and should I say, our own predicament, if we fail to do what Jesus told us, you fill with all those, and stay filled with all those. All right, these men, and remember, I don't intend to take every little item or angle of those men preaching and teaching. I am basically looking at their expectation of the coming of the Lord. And when they were expecting the Lord to come, they saw something, I mentioned a few years, Number of years. I mentioned about 1260 days. 
So they turned them in to Yates. F. Mr. Miller, that was the father of the Adventist movement. He made a, a statement that he felt that the 1260 days in the book of Revelation really meant 1260 years. Well, with today's knowledge of the scriptures, it, there was not a lot of people that knew anything about it back in Miller's day. Many people have never even considered those days and numbers. But he went into the depth of it and tried to figure out something that would be valuable for the church of that hour. And he came up with a two years that would make 1260. It was 538 AD. And the next year then, because it took 1260, made it up to 1798. And when he read that part, he felt it had to do with a Catholic church. And of course, the Catholic church had been involved in that period of time. Because that was a system, a spiritual system, that was really linked with the devil, with spiritual forces in high places. Remember in the book of Daniel, read about the four kingdoms, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And those four kingdoms were ruled by four different princes, principalities, angelic powers, dark angels. Right? Remember when the angel of the Lord Gabriel came down to Daniel? He said, I was coming to you, but it took me 21 days to break through the ozone layer. <laughs> Right, he thought they were gold there. <laughs> hey, the devil is thought they were gold. I hope you understand that. But to break through spiritual principalities in high places, uh, it took him days and days. And he needed help from Michael to get through. So those principalities are powerful spirits. And they're placed as a belt around the globe. And we not only four of us. There are spiritual principalities over every country that there is. Right. Therefore, people have a tendency to defend their country. <laughs> right? Amen. Because, hey, I'm an Norwegian. I'll fight for Norway, right? You're Filipino, I'll fight for the Philippines. Or whatever. Japanese want to fight for Japan. That's pretty full spiritual principality. Right. Yeah. Remember, you, when you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, you die. You walk in a way, you walk to a Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, you're not a Philippine anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, I, and I'm not a Norwegian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course we are, because it is symbolic. You die in a symbolic way. And then you got buried, baptized, the longer you're dead and buried, you're not supposed to show up with your old passion. Right? And God filled you with his Holy Spirit. And that means now you're a citizen of a different country. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And it's not going to be no more in America, England, Germany, France, and all that. No, it's heaven. Yeah. And it's beyond the head of the principality. Amen. Right. In high places. Yeah. The evil spirit. Amen. And of course, the things you're still on earth, that devil try to level back to fight the connection between you and the Lord. Amen. Right. And of course, he describes the lower high priest, and he is still our high priest. Amen. He has not stepped down from his interceding place yet. Still mercy. Still available for salvation. 
salvation. Right. Hey, remember, it's going to be salvation even in the Christian religion. Yes. It is. Because when you read Matthew 25, verse 31, you read that there are people coming off to the great tribulation. And the Lord says to them, Blessed are you. Go into my Father's kingdom that is prepared before you before the foundation of the world. So there are people that are live in the great tribulation and they are going to be predestined to eternal life. And they're going to walk in to the millennium age. Right. As natural people, right. giving birth to children, making families, and living peacefully for a thousand years. And they're not going to look a thousand years when a thousand years has passed by. Hey, if, if, if we age like we do today, and you still feel get to be 80 years old, you look like, ooh, right? And the way just the same. Yeah. But in the millennium, an 80-year-old man will look like a 20-year-old. And a 500-year-old man might look like a 30-year-old. <laughs> and 900-year-old man might look like a 60-year-old. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see when we get there. Yeah. But we don't worry about it. Because you and I, if we qualify by living Christ's life, we will not have to go into the millennium in our earthly, purple body. But we can walk in with a promised body, heavenly one, prepared before us, and overflow with it, hallelujah, with immortality. Yes. And that is why we are so intense in our walk today. Yes. Because we know the Lord is coming by His clothes. The enemy is here right with us. Yes. We don't know the day or the hour. We know we're in the season. But still, we still have some of our mortality in our minds. We get earthly minded of certain things and want to know some things a little bit more than others. You want to get smart, you want to have an answer before others, and in that pattern, we blow it by trying to interpret the scriptures without the meaning of the Holy Spirit. Remember, now we have the tsunami in Japan, and some people probably already have an answer, scripture-wise, for the tsunami. Like I said in the morning, if I don't, if I read Holy Christ, I talked about Kuwait, that there was the oil well, the little fire, by Saddam Hussein, and suddenly a smart guy, a preacher, said, this is the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 9. Because there, the angel came down, and open up the gate to the pit. And when they open the door to the pit, here comes smoke out. <laughs> and that was the Kuwait deal. <laughs> See, people get smart, but after a while, they become kind of silly. Because the smoke is out. And it didn't last for five months now. But it's a continuation in the scriptures. There is happening before it and after it, and the, the continuation of it stopped off. <coughs> it didn't happen. So therefore, the pit was closed again. <laughs> and nobody talked about it anymore. <laughs> and that is the way the coming of the Lord has been this way for many, many years. And people are looking and using their calculators to try to find the next event that they can predict or prophesy and put into this way and shake the world a little again. And that is what I pray we can avoid with such a little dealing. Remember, I'm not mad at Mr. Miller. And he is dead a hundred years before I was born. Right? 
He died in 1849. I was born in 1949. So that tells me, why should I be mad at a man like that? Right? He didn't hurt me. He hurt a lot of people. Right. But remember, there's a lot of people that have hurt each other. But maybe you have hurt someone too. Have you always been polite? Always been friendly? Never put up an argument? <laughs> Never said anything to hurt someone? Hey, you need to think about it. Right. You need to change your attitude. Be friendly. If we can say like Stephen and Jesus, Father, forgive us. They don't know what they do. We're much better off. But it takes pride in us to say it. We have to be dead to ourselves. Yeah. All right. So Mr. Miller, when he came up to those two days, 538-1798, and he made the number 1260. And of course, in the Bible, we can read about certain scriptures where a day is made over to a year. But it doesn't mean that every time you read about the day, that it, that it is necessarily a year. Right. You have to leave God the liberty. You choose to take a day, you call it a day. And then, for him, to make a day, you call it a year. That's that is liberty. Remember, he gave us a week. Six days is almost done. Right. Adam is part of the week. And we are at the brink, at the end of the sixth day of that week. And there's still one more day to come. Right. And that's what was one day and one year. That is one year a day and a thousand years. Amen. So here, you have to, to link up and measure a little differently. A day is a thousand years. Amen. Other places, a day is a year. And other places again, a day is a day. Right. As in the Adventist movement, Brothers and sisters, I have never been in an Adventist church. Not because I'm scared of it. They have just never come to get through that channel. I, I came to the Salvation Army. And I went through the Pentecostal Trinitarian system. And then, after the true organization, I asked the Lord, I don't need no organization. I want to walk with you from now on. Then I found this truth. <clears throat> I heard about the brother William Graham and all the wonderful things. And I said, I'm going to go to that group. And though we read that fight that happened in, in July 1973. But when I came down to that place, I mentioned about the damaged brother who came to me and said, the end of the world is in August 26th. And I said, boom. Is this the same thing like you have in the organized French? Because people are predicting and making statements, and no right there in the German movement. There are elements. I don't say that the whole the whole group said that. But within the group, there rise of elements who want to be important, play important roles, so that the people people go say, I saw it first. Things like that. And of course, the only thing he used was statements of Brother William Bell that he felt that seventy seven with pressure in the millennium. He didn't really say that for the Lord, no. but he said, as a private student of the scripture, 
I forget. And remember, he lived in the early 60s. This was 1960, 61, where he made that statement. And it was still 17 years of the road. Till 77. And a lot of things can happen in those days. But remember now, 77, 87, 97, 2007, that's 30 years. It's 34 years since 77. And nothing has happened yet. Right. Nothing drastically okay. The world is getting in the worst shape yet. Stay down. Things are getting worse. Ah, homosexuality, lesbians. You don't marry anymore, they just live together. <coughs> in Norway, they marry homosexuals. Lesbians. They give them all the life promises. My Lord. Hey, it's good to be fair. The sexual activity is the same sex. It's disgusting, right? Yes. And it's against the law of nature itself. Yes. You don't see a moose. You don't even see dogs going that way. <laughs> but man, worse. They can do it. Right. So the animal kingdom is better off. <laughs> they have more, hey, they don't have marriage. <laughs> but they have law that is not confused. Right. Or you might say, I've seen some monkeys or something like that. Hey, suit <laughs> yourself. <laughs> but the animal kingdom is cleaner have better standards than us humans. Right. We are in a terrible shape. And it is going to get worse. Right. And remember we had Billy, Billy Graham in 1970-71 he came to Europe from America and he preached a series of meetings in Germany. And it was all transmitted to big screens. That was the first time I saw a big screen. And I went to one of the, uh, of the big theaters in my old town where they have set up the big screen. And he, and he mentioned in one of his sermons in 1970 that he was ashamed to see the, the condition of the Scandinavian people. He said it looked worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. That was his statement. And he said, if the Lord don't come now, you will have to raise up the people from Sodom and Gomorrah and say, I'm sorry, I should be out. Because the conditions in these countries are worse. Well, one thing is for sure, Billy Graham has never been in Sodom and Gomorrah. But in his mind, he kind of pictured and framed a way of thinking. It must have been figured out. But when you go to Gary Nader today, now you understand how that is going to be in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the Lord hasn't taken it out yet. But the cup is almost full. It must be. I think it's about the time for the cup to run over. Oh, yeah. Not with joy, but with iniquity and evil. So we're in a bad shape. That's the truth. Right. What? So, when you're in such a bad shape, we need to get out of here. And then, we go on our knees, and we start saying, Lord, give me a clue that we're getting out of here. And then you start reading the Bible, and there's a little cat scripture popping up. And you start using your calculator, and you end up coming up with a year of the Lord's coming. That's what people have done up through the years. That's what Mr. Miller did. I believe that he did some research, praying, fasting, and trying his level best to get, get, get this as polite and correct as possible. And he could not get beyond 1844. This was the deadline. And 
if this will use 1260 for that calculation, he used the days of Daniel and the 2300 days of night. Right. He used from Daniel and he said from 457 BC. That was the peak point he made. I didn't make it. He said 457 and 2,347 evenings, and it, he ended up with 1844. And he was shocked. He found a year where he was living in. He was in the season. It was only about 12, 14 years of the road. And he was being 1844 when he found that scripture. <clears throat> and he started preaching it approximately 1836. He started really preaching it and telling the people, the Lord is coming in 44, 1844. And he gave a lot of people. People left the denomination, Baptist, whatever it was. There were no Pentecostals in those days. Why? Well, there may have been kind of apostles, but the uh, Assistant Street was 1906. Right. right? So there was no Pentecostal movement yet. <coughs> Just Pentecostal individuals. <laughs> All right, so here it was the Methodist, the Baptist people, and they were just on fire. They, they were fighting him because I think it's the middle of the Baptist. <coughs> started off as a Baptist. But when he started this way, the Baptist people started shunning him, pushing him out, and he got on his own, and he gained a lot of people. Hey, the, the Adventist movement is into the millions today. Right. And they're still sitting, believing that in 1844 was the year. But it was not the year of the visible coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Since he didn't come. And Mr. Miller was pushed out in the dark. And he died in 1849, had just a little church in the woods somewhere, right. because they didn't want him anymore, because he had betrayed them. But the people who were fixed, remember, you can be fixed on a year and never leave it. There are still people thinking 1977 was a very important year. Oh yes, we can't get them out of it. But they will just change since what they were hoping for that didn't happen. They're looking for other clues. Well, if that didn't happen, what happened? And then they come up with a different answer. Hold on. So here, the people start going on their knees, and there was a lady called Ellen White, and she became one of the most famous women in the Adventist movement. All right, I don't know much about her, but she has a, probably about a thousand visions, appearances, leading the church and the system in a certain direction. And of course, they started on the Sabbath. So, Adventist people, they keep the Sabbath. And they teach the people that if you keep Sunday as a holy day, you are really taking the mark of the beast. Right. As long as you got the mark of the beast. I'm not Only the people who use Saturday as the holy day, like the Sabbath, they are the only people who are right with God. That's because they never read Romans chapter 14. You can read Romans chapter 14 when you go home. <clears throat> because, brothers and sisters, to go and keep a day in the Gentile great age, it's not whether you keep a Sunday or a Saturday. That type of the Lord, that was a typology, is over. There is no restriction of holding the Saturday at all. Right. All right. I don't need to go into 
That's the last. But if you read Romans chapter 14, you should find it on find it for yourself. It's very easy. Because Paul says, one is even the day. And all the does not. Right. Everyone be sure in their own life to part. That they're doing because every day is not the Lord. You can keep a Monday now. You can set up a Tuesday for the Lord. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? If you're busy, hey, think about today's life. Are you going to close down the hospital because it's a Saturday or a Sunday? No man's going to work. That's impossible today. You can't do that. But if you work to work on a Sunday, you can take off Monday. But don't just go shopping. You can follow it. Remember, one day for the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Not one day for a <laughs> Well, I don't say forbid you to go back there. <laughs> but your main objective is to set off time for God. Yeah. Reading, studying, worshiping. Yeah. And when you are so happy here to have a judge, that they have should harvest several times a week. And you can set off time and worship the Lord together. Some people are not that fortunate. They're alone. They live in rural areas. They don't have a church. They have a set of time to live for the Lord and spend time with Him alone. Be happy, your brothers and sisters. Cherish your brothers and sisters. Esteem them highly. Where before them do they like to see you again? (laughs) All right? Yeah. So here, and remember now, they use the true prophet ministry in the Adventist church. The true prophets are not the true men in Adventist belief. It is the Old and the New Testament. The true prophets are the Old and the New Testament. So you see, when things don't go the way you think, they have to rearrange things. So they they can put other valuable things in it. And they got something to play with. And since the Lord did not come, they have to find another solution to the coming of the Lord. And they call the appearance in 1844, I mentioned in this morning, Perusia. And Perusia is something I heard within the rest of William Rand's believers back years ago. Perusia is really a spiritual coming of the Lord Jesus Christ where it's not coming down on earth to beat the right up. It is coming down as a so-called overseer to watch the church and to judge people. And that is the same idea as the Adventist church system started developing back in those days. Really, it has to do with leading you with prayer. Put prayer upon you. You've got to be scared. If the Lord is known. The dream age is really over. That's what they say. So now, it's judgment time. I've heard the word judgment time many a time in the later years. It's house cleaning. It's not about getting people saved and get them out of this world and into the bottom of Christ. But it's almost like to clean the church out of people so that there's only you left. You're the only one who are a sound believer. I'll say, a shame for us if that is the attitude of the day. The other you say, well, look at Paul. He had to thrust people out. <laughs> And say, give them over to the devil for the destruction of their flesh. But he didn't say only that, he said, so that their soul could be saved in the day of Christ. So Paul never thrusted anyone out for them to go to hell. No, the only correction that he made was that people could wake up. 
see anymore. Even the bad guy, high minutes, and the son of the comfort space, and that guy, hey, Paul was kind of mad at them, but he didn't throw them in hell. He said, trust them all from among you so that they can start rethinking their condition and get right to God. He said it so they could repent. That's a different attitude. Today, they send you out the door. I hope you go lost and end up in hell. And I'll say that is not a Christian attitude. That's not only those filled attitude. That's a mental, hateful attitude, and it comes from the pit. Yeah. It's a different attitude altogether. All right. So in 1844, they changed it to Perugia. And now, hey, you might hear that word later on, even in the Brandon ranks. Perugia. There is a man called Brother Lee Wales. He is almost 90 years old. And he was the one who set up the first book of Brother Brandon, the, the exposition of the seven church ages. And he was the masterpiece because he was a theologian and he put that book together just at the day, at the time of Brother Manon passed away. And he came up with Perusia theology. All right. But when Mr. Miller had to leave the scene, I mean, he was not important anymore, the Adventist movement was hoping and really listening because it was wounded. Some people got on their knees and started searching for clues to understand this. And there was a man, and I, I guess you heard the name, Mr. Charles <coughs> Russell. And he became the father of the Jehovah's Witness. Charles Russell. Yeah. He was a good guy. And he believed in the Millerite doctrine. And since 1844 did not work out, he started doing research. Because Mr. Miller was on a certain track. And there must be something in it. And when he had studied through, he came up with some other years. Hey, you want to buy a calculator and start in their footsteps? I'll say, when the first man go wrong, I can guarantee you the next one will go wrong too. If they if they base their calculation. <laughs> but the, on the same thing, it's bound to be wrong. Always end up wrong. And Mr. Russell, he came up with new prophetic years. And one was 1914. So he moved it up from 1844 till 1914. And since he was at it, he came up with some other deals. 1925. And it's amazing what people can cook up when they start calculating. First of all, the Lord Jesus Christ would come in 1914. And he didn't come. I don't need to elaborate on this. It just one fail. And of course, that was a big blow on the Jehovah Witness system. And then, he said something. When, when 1925 failed, he said that no, no, it was something else that happened in 1925. And you know what they say? In 1925, Abraham Isaac and Jacob 
and the old time patriarchs, they resurrected the dead. Hey, they resurrected in Matthew chapter 37, verse 63. After Jesus rose from the grave, the Old Testament saints came out of the grave. And they never went back to the grave again. The Old Testament saints left and the Lord took them to heaven. So there is no Old Testament saint in the grave today. They went to record. Check it out. Matthew 27, verse 53. And that was a problem for us. When he said, and some people even believe that the resurrection has already happened here. Yeah. And of course, Paul was talking about the New Testament believers from the day of Pentecost. Because he knew well that the Old Testament saints were God. But some people remember today, there are people teaching the resurrection is already over. Amen. The rapture has already happened. What are you doing, guys? Did you hear? Wait for the rapture is already over. That is many a person's belief today. You have to struggle with it? I all have to struggle with it. The resurrection of the bride of Christ has not yet happened. Yeah. We're still here. Amen. What is the requirement for being raptured, transformed? It is being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Any person who is truly filled with the Holy Ghost will be raptured. You know, but why if they don't believe the message? How they heard it? If they heard it and rejected it, how did they hear it? Remember, there are some people, they use the message as a winning machine, as a hammer. They use the message to blow people to pieces. If that is a, that's not a message. That's a hammer. That's a tool of destruction. The message when the man preached was full of mercy. You could not have a more merciful believer on the on the soil of earth as this man has. He loves everyone. Oh yeah, but he preached against this and that. Yes, he did. When you met him, he was your servant. And he would serve you the best of his knowledge. He called people that were denominational his brothers. You would never call them your brothers. Amen. He did. So that, that was that man. All right. Mr. Russell, to go back to him, when the resurrection and the casting away, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ didn't happen the way they thought, they developed a different answer to their statement. And they said it was the resurrection of the Old Testament faith. Remember, the Pope one time he declared that Mary is no resurrected. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is no resurrected and gone to hell. Catholic. Hey, brothers and sisters, Mary is a New Testament believer. Right. right. And she is still among the saints in the grave. Right. Of course, when you look at a saint today, die. Going home. His body goes to the grave. 
and his soul goes to heaven, right? But when we talk about the resurrection, it is really when the body and the soul get together, right? And it's overflowed in a different body and comes out of the grave and never goes back into it again. And married have not done that yet, whether the folks say it or not. So, Abraham, so the Jehovah Witness, of course, you cannot change that. Now, still believe Abraham resurrected in 1925. That's okay. That's not a big problem for us. We know he was resurrected approximately in 33 AD. Right. This is just an issue of discussion. So let them believe whatever they want. But for you, you know it is just another error. Added because they needed to change their original message to another one. And you know, the 1920, no, the 1914 ordeal, the first statement of the Jehovah Witness, when they found out that Jesus the Christ did not come down, all the way down, they stopped him in the air. <laughs> and they said, Perugia. Uh, 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 second Perugia, there's only one Perugia. Uh, the second Perugia, because he didn't come down. But now, he is judging people. It's very silly. Jesus Christ is tightly interceding for the souls that are going to be heir of salvation. That is his main message. Till and till the day cometh that that job is complete. And that job is not complete until the Lord stops this headline and catches the bride and brings her back home. Yeah. So as long as you're alive, that type of justice is not there yet. But we'll come to something later on. In life, and when you didn't come in 1914, 1925, they moved the coming of the Lord to 1974. And I have prayed to the Lord. 1967, I came to the Lord. A happy believer. I testified to the Lord that I met on the street and, and I was holding pew oil. I, I was driving a big truck and, uh, and went to different houses, factories, institutions, and delivered diesel and fuel oil for heat. And I came to a man. And I delivered words to his house, to his house, and they were by the respect outside and said, You know, I am a Jehovah Witness, he said. Oh, listen. Nice. Yeah, and I believe in the country of the Lord. And I said, Yeah, I do too. And he said, Yeah, he's coming in 1974 or 75. No, 74. 74. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, Sir, what would you say in 1975 if you're still here? He said, Well, to be honest, I would not be a Jehovah Witness anymore. <laughs> okay. I did not want to argue. But people, there's no truth. Hey, I'm happy when people are astute. That thrills me. But when they are astute about the Lord coming in 1974, then it's the warning bell starting ringing. Because that doesn't sound right. It is not scriptural. The Lord is never going to tell the bride, 
about the fixed and eternal care. You say, Brother Strowman, are we going to more, know a little more today than we, I mean, then than we know today? I believe that you will increase in knowledge every day of your life. And if you are interested in spiritual walk, you want to emphasize on your spiritual walk and get close to God all the time. Remember, you are a group of people that are singing a special song. I'm a friend of God! Right? Are you really a friend of God? Yes. If you are a friend of God, why do you worry about the time? The year, the day. Didn't he say all the matches that the housekeeper should stay alert and ready at all times? Because you don't know when the master comes home. The only thing that you need to know is to be ready. In season and out of season. And it is not even exhausting. No. You want to, I was just have to stay ready all the time. Why not be exhausting? It's not. You die from your own self. No, you live for Christ. Stay close to Him. You're a friend of God. Amen. Amen. You're a bride. Amen. And there is a bridegroom. And He will be there all the time. And he will never forget you. No. You will never be left behind. You will get swept. Right. It's not made to worry about. That man, 1974, you know, I never went back to ask him in 75. No, what? <laughs> hey, be friendly. Just pray for them. That they can wake up. Their own predicament. So they don't remember. You you can easily put more burden on people by telling them you you see now, right? And they'll hate themselves. So people go and kill themselves. There is nothing to live for anymore. If I'm a grown man, I'll be probably wrong later on. Why keep going? No. Use the wisdom of God so that some people can be saved out of their calculations and whatever they're trying to level back. Remember, some people are not just smart. They have been overwhelmed by smart guys. And they've been told so many times that they may have become a robot. They do exactly what they're told. I believe because he said so. Yeah. No, you believe because the Lord inspired you. Remember what I say to you now. It's nothing that you take, write down, and go on and say, This is what I'm trying to say. Hey, that won't help anyone. But if you go on your knees and pray about things, and the Holy Spirit starts talking to you, and you get an experience on your own. Yes. Because that's what I have to do. I heard about these years. And in 74, I heard about the end of 5 and 77. And August 26 and 73, the world was going under, and it didn't. And I learned my, hey, I, I, I really didn't believe it. But when people are very forceful, oh, you don't believe that? You know you're going to be left behind? And, well, it's going to be hell for you. That, 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 that's the attitude. That same man, a few years later, he got a new revelation. He came up one of the highways of Norway and he stopped and spent the night as a friend of mine. And he had a new revelation. The bride is not supposed to go to sleep anymore. And he meant physically. Uh, 
He just had that revelation of two, three days ago. And now he will go on a missionary journey to tell us the bride should not sleep anymore. <coughs> As you know, he came to my friend's home. He is married and have a nice wife. And they have a warm and cozy home. And he came and he sat down in the living room and the sofa there. Uh, and the wife was fixing up some hot meals, you know. And his eyes were more and more. Uh, and before he knew it, he went down. <laughs> His own revelation didn't hold him away. <laughs> so the next morning, they couldn't get him because he's been, he was exhausted. He couldn't stay awake. I can tell you, you could be able to stay awake for three, four, five days, would you? You would have to lose off of him in the court anyway. <laughs> so he, he just fell asleep and they couldn't get him away. So they said they just left him on the sofa. They went to bed. And the next morning he was still asleep. <laughs> so, do you see? That's how things happen. People get the weird revelation. It's not a revelation, no. it's just food for thought. Right. And that was the same man who told me the world is going under in 74. Three. August. I'll go for next to you this great tribulation. Great tribulation has not come yet, and it's 2,000 years old. I still don't think that man is alive because he was not an old man back then. And it tells me when people start calculations, they will just continue. If this one goes wrong, let's try the next one, and the next one. Oh, yeah. I've been with people, I've been with preachers, and I heard say, well, I don't believe that this will last 10 more years. I don't think it can last 5 more years. Hey, I will say, a man all those honesty, and it seems the condition, situation. If I ask you a question, how long do you think this world will hold together the way it looks now? And I ask you, you think it would last about 10 years? Some people might say, I don't think so. Think about the gas price. I'll say, welcome to Norway. It's three times higher. Three times higher than you got price out there when you come today. Welcome to Norway. You might have known. <laughs> you tell you, you tell yourself, this world is getting insane. I'll told you about the situation in Norway. Marriage, divorce, people don't marry anymore. Homosexuality, lesbians, and all that stuff. I said, what? How can this world hold together anymore? It's falling apart. Come on, oh Lord. But I'm not going to say, hi, I got a revelation. The Lord told me, yeah, right? It will never work. It's insanity to go back to that. Right. And then, you had the year 2004. And a half. And most of this is going to be Hosea. Need 
I was the nature about the coming of the Lord. The day, month, day. In 1992, I was in Moscow, in Russia. And a Russian brother in the Lord, a Pentecostal guy, he handed me a track, a leaflet. And I looked. October 28, 1992, coming of the Lord, in Russia, of course. I saw I, I the date, but I didn't understand the sign thunder. And he said, and that was in the summer, just a few months of the road, till 1992, October. And he said, Brother, the Romans. What do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I will tell you on the 29th. <laughs> 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 and then I Told 
77. I met some people in South Africa on this journey just a few weeks back. And one sister in the Lord told me and said, I was in the service in Johannesburg in South Africa on December the 31st, 1977. And we were all sitting anxiously waiting on the appearance of the Lord in the grand moment. Oh yeah. Because they're all happening. Oh. Yeah, oh, oh, they're all their way out there. Brothers and sisters, what way out are they? And how worse are they than you and me? It's just a thought the way. It's one thought, and you're caught. And that is what I prayerfully want you to be aware of. Right. I don't say that you're out and that you're asleep, but I say when someone comes and tells something very fantastic, remember, there's a few years now since William Randall passed away. Now people are starting thinking, can this really be the message of the hour? What about the generation? And now, many, 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 many years ago, can this be the truth after all? People are starting using their more grain and sins up here to wonder, did we go wrong? What this is? Because they have fixed even generations. This generation shall not see till it has all happened. And they have fixed generations of years. It is 40, 60, 80. What is it? Why do you think it's so years? Are you calculating? So that you can say. If you're young, you'll say, well, I've got time to get married and have a couple of kids before the coming of the Lord. Right? Or I can, I can build a house and live in it for five years before the coming of the Lord. We start calculating and focusing what can I do before the Lord comes. Is it, it is wrong to build a house? No. Is it wrong to get married? No. Is it wrong to have kids? Absolutely not. But the way of thinking, I could do this before the coming of the Lord. You put something before the spiritual interest of your life. Right. That is wrong. Hey, to leave in the coming of the Lord and get married. But don't calculate and say, I could do this before he comes. Well, you would be caught. And he came because your calculation was wrong. Hey, I heard a man say to me back in 1970 or 73, he said, I don't need to cut more wood. Remember, Norway is a cold country. And we go out in the woods and we cut wood. And we save it up for the winter so we can burn the wood. In the stove, open fireplace to keep warm inside. And that man said, I probably don't need because the coming of the Lord is so close now. So he has been out of the wood for more than 30 years. <laughs> right? I hope you get what I'm saying. You don't need to store up anymore because the Lord is coming. There was a man in America, he went on a fast, 40 days fast, and he came down from the mountain and said, The Lord told me there's going to be a growth in the country. Everyone, all the believers, now you go buy food. Buy canned food. Store up in your basement. It's going to be a disaster in America. And you know the believers? They went home and they bought canned 
canned food by the moon. Build up their basements, the little storehouses, and some sold their houses and moved out to the country because it would be a bad thing to live in the city. You know, that was in 1971. And the drug hasn't come yet. And the brother who told me the story, he said, well, one day I heard the can can for coffee in my basement. You see, cancer can only last that long, and then it will explode. <laughs> you can't do that. So all, so you say, a man fasting for 40 days, he must be true. Hey, watch it. Right. It is not so long you fast. You can fast for a year, for me, it wouldn't make a difference at all. It is what's coming out of you. You see, people want to be important. They want to say, I've done this, I, I was capable of that. What's that to you? Right. He has to take the shovel and throw all the cancer. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of foreign food because of a man having casting to tell them some things that have never happened. And some sold their houses. You know the Jehovah Witness? They actually sold their homes and put the money into the ministry because the Lord is coming anyway. We don't need a house anymore. Right? So they've been an hour without a house for 30 years now. Of course they don't. But some of them learned a lesson. Right. And a lot of people never came back to the Jehovah Witness. And the Jehovah Witness, the people, one more man that I met and he told me, and he said like this, the Jehovah Witness is the only organization in the world that have admitted that they're wrong. <laughs> well, good faith. But what about the next calculation? I hope they never come up with another one. For their own case. You understand this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you this because I have a sense, a feeling, that there are more days, more years. And how are we going to approach it? I hope that your dedication in Christ don't rock your stand on holy ground. Right. If they come and say, he's here, he's there, don't believe it. It's that easy. Because you have direct contact with God Almighty through the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't you? Isn't spiritual walk an individual walk in this Gentile age? It is. So don't look to the side. Look up. Your redemption is growing up. And he will not leave you out there. Remember, he, 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 did you come to the Lord because he spoke to you? And if he started speaking after he promised, he'll never leave you. Never forsake you. You got a promise that's more so than 1844. Right. 1914. 1925. 1974. I should have said 1982. 1992. 2000. There were predictions about 2000. Nostradamus. And now you have 2012. Some <laughs> <laughs> people are crazy about that. <laughs> Some may come and say, if you don't believe 2012, you're out. You'll never make it. Hey, just a warning. Let you know. The Lord is part of something. He's going to fulfill it. If He will fulfill it, it takes time. 
And the Lord bless you